Alex here for Leapfrog Fight TV, and I am with none other than Miss Tasha Hingley. Mate, it's so good to see you. And it's good to see you too. And she's bought me a lot of time. Because <laughs> we're at Starbucks. <laughs> um, mate, how are you? No, I'm good. No, I'm, I've got, honestly, I'm really good. So the idea of today, I wanted to see you because I see a lot of stuff on YouTube about Tasha Hingley. I know of you. Um, I've seen you training, I've seen Instagram, there's loads and loads of Tasha Hingley around, but there's not much that tells me about Tasha Hingley as a person. Yeah. So no, I, I wanted to meet you today and have this amazing coffee from Starbucks. <laughs> um, and just basically get to know you, get to know your fight career, let people know who Tasha Hingley is. So, let's start from the beginning. Let's start from a young Tasha. You're from Sutton Coldfield, I believe. I am. Yeah, the, so the, the Sutton Coalfield ends. Yeah, Birmingham, Birmingham. Birmingham, Birmingham. Um, what was life like growing up in Sutton Coalfield? No, it was good. Yeah, so um, got like three siblings. My mum's a big part of my life. Um, happy childhood. Um, yeah, everything was everything was really good. I wasn't really into sports well, as you know, a child. No. That surprises me. I was into eating. But I wasn't, I wasn't into sports, so um, I think, yeah, for, for my whole family, getting into Thai, because it was the first sport I ever got into. So you weren't into sports whatsoever, because you live in the gym, whether it's a Thai gym or a, um, a fitness gym, you are in the gym all the time? All the time. Like, if I'm not, like, running in the morning, I'm um, swimming, I'm um, doing Thai, I'm, you know, trying to do conditioning or weights, I'm doing something. So what sport, what was your sport at school? What did, was there a sport you enjoyed? Yeah, eating food. <laughs> really? No, honestly? Yeah, I, I, honestly, like, I, so in my family, I was known as um, the chubby one. So were you quite a big yeah, young yeah. child? Yeah, yeah, I was kind really? of like a chubby child growing up and, yeah. Wow, that surprises me. Yeah, so... God. What school did you go to in Sutton? So I went to Streetly. Street did you? School. You went yeah. to Streetly? Yeah. No way, in a posh school. <laughs> For everyone that doesn't know, Streetly is the, the in-school. Well, it was back in the day. It was, definitely. Um, yeah, street, Streetly as a whole is, is quite a place to be, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. It's a lovely place. Um, so growing up, did you do well at school? Yeah, Were you quite did, academic, ac academic? Yeah, yeah, I, was, I did really well at school. Um, I really, really liked reading. Um, I was very into um, being at home. I was a very, like, mummy's girl, you know, so I'd follow her around the house and help her with things. And, um, yeah, I used to read to her in the kitchen. And, yeah, we've, me and my mum got a really close relationship. Quite a close family. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I was really good at school, really enjoyed it, had, like, good friends. Um, and then went to college and um, did public service because mm -hmm. my, um, my career, my, my career plan was to be a police officer. So yes, yeah, so I went to college, um, did two years at college and I've still got friends from college that I know now. So hi Nick. Hi Nick. <laughs> so um, yeah, so uh, yeah, growing up was, uh, was great. Like I've had, uh, overall really like, I feel like I've had a nice life so far. Do you think you've had like two different lives though? Because your life now is completely different to when you were younger. You do all these sports, you do all this training, you, you, you've trimmed up nice, you've like, do you feel that the younger you was a completely different you? I feel like I've always, I've always been motivated. I've always had a drive. Whatever my goal's been, whether it's to, you know, uh, do well in education, buy a house, learn to drive, travel, train, fight, whatever it's been, I always put 100% in. And you travel a lot. Yeah, yeah, I do travel. Like. But I've always traveled, like, as a, as a child, my mum took us all around the world. Oh, really? Yeah, so I was going to, like... The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, does it? <laughs> no, no. It doesn't, does it? Honestly, really? I yeah. am literally the spit of my mum. Are you? Yeah, 100% the spit of my mum. Literally, like, we're like the double, we're like the same person, we've got the same humour. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, everything is just the same. So yeah. I get a lot of my drive, my motivation from her. But I looked up to her. She was like a role model to me growing up, literally. And um, your siblings? So, uh, yeah, so my brother's in the army. So, again, fitness is a massive thing. He's doing ultras. He literally was just doing a massive marathon in Nairobi and trying not to get shot at the same time. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <Sorry>. so, <laughs> yeah, but he does that, he do, he's like on another level. So it sounds to me like it runs through the family and it stems from your parents, this kind of 
this discipline from from your mum and dad and you know this focus and drive because you, your whole family seems to be very yeah yeah d definitely like when we're in sports I think we're very like focused on kind of what the goal is and how we're going to get there and working hard were you all competitive as you were young when you were young um, because there was four of us it was like two and two yeah so it was like tag uh, teams yeah yeah like fighting against each other I remember getting stabbed in the face with a fault by my sister so yeah, yeah there was lots of uh, <laughs> so from school what do you do for a living because your job's quite interesting yeah so I work for West Mercia Police I'm based at Worcester Police Station and I work for the Offender Management Department. So we manage the high risk offenders in the area. Um, we manage them either when they're in custody or when they're in the community. Mm. So our, obviously our priority is public safety yeah. and it's providing offenders that come out of custody with support to get back onto their feet, to, make sure, to try and stabilise their lives. Um, give them what they need to kind of stay away from crime and then if that doesn't work, if they commit crime, our job is to um, catch them and catch convict them. them. No way. So That's quite an interesting job that is because there's a lot of people out there I feel that need a lot of different support in many different ways but criminals especially that have been locked up for, you know, for so long yeah. just to then be let out with, it, with, with no support must be really really difficult so yeah. for, for you to do that I, mean, I, I can imagine it's really challenging it is and I think it's like it's part of um, the police that the public don't know about that there mm. is a department that goes out there and helps people to get back onto their feet once they've come out of custody but every day is different no day is the same but that's I think what I like about the job I'm one day I'm doing something and then next thing I'm getting pulled over here and doing something else and I can't obviously talk too much about yeah, it because it's worth, yeah, yeah. but, um, but yeah, it's like... It's funny though, because whenever people think of the police force, they think of a Bobby on the beat or, or CID. Yeah. That's all you think about, Yeah. you know, yeah. Um, and it shows there are so many other, other elements to, to the police force that people don't know about. Yeah, definitely. And I've been, from being in the police, I've learned so much and I probably respect the police more now from because I can see behind the scenes, I see the hours that they put in, the yeah. time, the work, the late nights, the times when they're not going home to their families, you know, the, the success that they do have. And I think they're very much misunderstood. Um, I think the public don't understand that once they're, once they're charged, it's out of the police's hands. So anything after the charge has got nothing to do with the police. And obviously police get a lot of bad attention and they've got a bad reputation but they you know from the the people that I work with and the people that I know they go above and beyond mm. to keep people safe and get justice for people so that I work with an amazing team an absolutely amazing team. And how long team. have you been been doing that? So I've worked for the uh, West Mercia Police for four years but I've been in the department that I'm in now for about two. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so so you, were you in Sutton before? Uh, so I worked. Uh, yeah. So I worked in Birmingham before, and yeah. I worked with offenders then. So I've been working with offenders for about eight years. So wow. yeah. That's a, that must be a mad job. I mean, you must see so many different characters. Yeah. You know, from really, really bad to really bad that want to go good, to people that don't really know their own mind. It, like it must be. Wow. Yeah, so we have like obviously good news stories where mm. people have turned their lives around yeah. and you know appreciated the support and the help that we've given them and it's good for us because we can see them making changes and developing and growing and then obviously you get other cases where you know it's just really sad and some people are just kind of just so lost in the system and just don't know how to don't know how to live in society. And the easiest thing for them is to be back in custody, which is obviously what, it's not what we want. There's a lot of people out there like that, isn't yeah. there at the moment? It's yeah. like, do you know what, it's easier just to be in prison because I yeah. get fed. Yeah, it's you warm. Know, I'm warm, I have a bed. Yeah, it's, there's social in there. Yeah, you like know. if I was homeless, if I, you know, if I was on my ass and I was homeless, you, like, what would you choose, man? Yeah. It's difficult, isn't it? Commit a crime. A lot of things in society that have got to be changed and, you know, but that's a hell. Hey, that's a whole other interview. Um, but yeah, what a fantastic job, man! And it's good to see that you enjoy it. There's a lot of people out there. In, like I enjoy my job, apart from this and things I've done in the past. I've always enjoyed what I've done. That's yeah. been a big thing for me. Yeah, if I'm not enjoying like this, if I if I'm not enjoying it, I'll just stop it. 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'll yeah. stop it and do something else. Because it's such a big part of your life working. Yeah. You have to enjoy it. Because if you don't enjoy it, you just, yeah, no, you won't put 100% in. And yeah, you'll be questioning why am I doing this? So let's get on to Muay Thai. Wow. So I've done a bit of research on you. I've known, like I said, I know you anyway, but you've had some fantastic opportunities during your career. Um, I do feel there's a part of me, I've got to be honest with you, Tasha, because I do, I wear my heart on my sleeve. There's a part of me that's got this thing inside of me that's always felt a bit uh, when I watch your fights. Because I feel that you've come up against some top opposition and just always come short. And yeah. for me, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. And for me, like, I'm watching certain fights on YouTube before I knew you, um, and I'm like, oh, oh, oh. Do, do you get me? Yeah. Do, do you feel the same? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. There's been, there's been fights where I look back and I think if I'd have just made some small adjustments, it would have been totally different. Um, but I think, you know, the, the, the fights that you don't win are the ones that you learn from the most. Yeah. And they've made me... It's cliche that, Yeah. it's true. It is true, it is true, because they're the ones that keep you in the gym. They're the ones that keep you working hard. And, you know, they're the ones that keep you up thinking at night, thinking kind of, like, I can't let that happen again. That is not going to happen to me again. Mm. You know, there's some fights that I've had that I look at and I think, oh, I just want to do it again. And I will do them again, obviously, if I get the opportunity because I know I can beat certain people. I've just come short up on the day. And that's because of lots of different reasons. But, you know, as you progress, you overcome those, you know, those things. And then, yeah, it's about, you know, knocking on that door again and trying again and seeing what happens, so. Tell us about your, cast your mind back to your fight on, uh, with Jazzy Park on yeah. the, um, what was it called, contender? Uh, the challenger. Challenger, that's yeah. it. Talk, t talk us through that, because that must have been like a mad experience uh, yeah. quite early on in your career as well yeah definitely take, it, take us back to that night so um, I'd spoke to Damien early on in the evening and we because obviously he wasn't there with me and it was really difficult because I was obviously in Malaysia I was on my own um, there was only one person there from the UK which was me and um, I was trying to kind of like keep it all together and it was a new experience for me. It was a great opportunity but it was like trying to manage everything that was going on. Um, so I'd spoken to Damien early on in the night, we had a game plan and then I got in there and I even, I've said to everyone, because he wasn't there, he wasn't in the corner, I felt like I got lost in there. Yeah. But it was a really good fight and um, I love Jazzy Park. I, she's an amazing she's girl. She's a big supporter of yours now as well, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And she's just, she's just a, she's a comedian. She's hilarious, but she's a lovely girl. And you know, what she's doing now is amazing for females and boxing and Muay Thai. So yeah, it was just a great experience. But I think for me, I'm very much, I rely heavily on my corner team. And Damien's been a massive part of my career. And not having him there, I felt that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but I, you know, I have to thank him for that opportunity because he was the one that got it for me and pushed me. And when I was over there and I was kind of like a little bit lost, he was pointing me in the right direction and giving me advice from his experiences and, you know, what he's learned along the way. And it's just, yeah, it's just nice. It was an, it was like, it was an amazing experience, the whole thing. Do you thing. think that experience, although you couldn't turn it down, mm. Do you think that experience would be better suited now? 100%, yeah. Do you feel that like it would be potentially a completely different outcome and a completely different night if it was presented to you now? Definitely. I think after my operation, um, it took me a long time. What was to... your operation? So I, um, in 2019, I was diagnosed with um, um, cancer. Oh. So that would explain the shaved hair. Yes. See, I thought you were just mad for haircuts, mate. Because I've looked through your Instagram and... Right, let me tell you now, right? Go onto Instagram, go onto Tasha's Instagram, scroll down to the bottom and you'll see some right dodgy ones. Yeah. 
they're terrible. No, I thought that was just, I didn't know. So what cancer did you have? If you don't mind. Yeah, no, no, it's fine now. Um, so I had cervical cancer. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So I had to have a hysterectomy at 33. And um, it took me a long time to get back to the fighter I am today. Mm. He didn't, he, like, at first, like, I, I got diagnosed and I was told I was going to have to have a hysterectomy, otherwise I would have been out of hospital for, like, 10 years, so it wasn't really an option. And in my heart, I just wanted to get back to fighting. Mm. That was just literally my main goal. It was all I spoke to my consultant about, I need to get back to fighting. So, I was, had the operation, had lots of complications, I was in and out of hospital. It was a really scary time, yeah, of especially because it was during COVID. So I couldn't have any of my family around me. So I was in and out of hospital on my own. Um, and then it was kind of like the recovery then, getting back to getting back to the gym, getting back to myself. And as much as I thought, once I was fit and once I was getting back into fighting, I kind of, I thought in my mind I'm back, but I don't think I was. You weren't. Yeah. No. It took me a long time. I think. So how, when you fought Jazzy, how long was that after the operation? And so I fought Jazzy. I was diagnosed in 2019, then I fought Jazzy in 2022. Right. So a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. So, but I think it's only this year that I've started to feel like. Tasha. Yeah. It I took can sense me. That. It took me a long time because. I was always questioning things and I was always questioning my fitness and my strength because my fitness and my strength was um, was a big part of me. It gave me confidence, I always felt good, but then I felt like after my operation that was taken away from me. So I felt like a different fighter. Yeah, and you've also gone through this whole thing on your own. Yeah. Like we, due, we lost a baby during lockdown. Are you joking? No, Sorry. and my wife was in hospital on her own. I couldn't see her. Yeah. I could not see her. Um, <laughs> You're taking a swipe at me? Yeah. <laughs> you didn't put your guard up there, did you? Um, yeah, so that whole thing that, you know, it was difficult for her anyway because we lost a baby, but the fact that she had to go through it all by herself yeah. made it even more traumatic. Yes. So what you've done is you've, you've had your operation and you've, you've dealt with everything that you've had to do, but you've had to do it on your own. Yeah. Which makes it so much harder. Yeah. Because you're battling with your own demons, aren't you? Yeah, definitely. Um, and and every time you kind of, you know, you need somebody there, there is nobody there. No. So, um, yeah, it was a difficult experience. What did you take from the experience in Malaysia? I met some amazing people that I still speak to now. Um, I, it was a beautiful country and um, it was just, it was nice to be able to kind of represent the UK, yeah. to go out there and put myself out there, challenge myself. And I just kind of like, it's an experience that I'm always gonna treasure. You get what I mean? I can't like, no one can take that away from you me. Were, you're a winner regardless on, yeah. on that night. Yeah, you definitely. Know, you got to fight Jazzy Parr, yeah. which not many people do, just whether she's a good fighter or not, it's, it's just a name, isn't it? Yeah, you yeah. Know? Um, so you, Taking that opportunity when it came may have not been the greatest time, yeah. but you couldn't say no. No, yeah, it's one of those um, opportunities. And you've you created can't say no. memories. Yeah. And this is the side of the sport that a lot of people don't seem to understand. Mm. Is that it's, yes, it's about the fighting, but look at the people you meet along the way. The experiences that you know, I've been doing this nearly 14 years, and the amount of people from all different walks of life that I've met the memories that I've got and you know the, the people that still message me now that have kind of stopped fighting or kind of you know moved on from Muay Thai and it's just amazing. Like, What's your most memorable fight? Uh, I'd have to say because of how how well it went and how good the camp was and how I felt like we were like really tight. I'd say it was um, the fight uh, Muay Thai Grand Prix this year where I fought Georgia against... Heaven. Yeah. See, I'm really into um, manifestation. I'm into positive thinking. I'm, I'm a really good judge of character. Like I can judge somebody within 30 seconds and I analyse everything. And for me, you can see from your walkout 
Yeah. You feel me, don't you? <laughs> you can see from what compared to all your other walkouts last year, etc., etc., the walkout at MTGP was exactly the same. Yeah. You didn't do anything differently. Yeah. You weren't dancing around, or you were just Tasha. Yeah. But you could see that Tasha was 110 percent. Yeah. On your MTGP walkout. And I felt it, but it was because of the the camp that I'd had. Damien, Alex, Craig, Sean, Puna, everyone came together for that camp. I had so much help. It was just, I, I can't lie, I can't thank them all enough. That camp went smoothly, my weight cut went smoothly. Everyone just pulled in and literally like, everyone was focusing on me and helping me and making sure I had everything I needed. And even Damien got me the opportunity I could never have got that opportunity by myself on such an amazing platform and to a great fight as well like yeah, Georgia yeah. Heaven was unbeaten you yeah, know you were yeah. you were stopping the Georgia Heaven track I know Georgia yeah. really really well I've interviewed her many times I've seen her fight absolutely yeah. I was interviewing Georgia when she was just starting out and she's a fantastic girl yeah yeah um, she's got a good tank on yeah her. oh my god her engine's unreal yeah but what a great fight for both of you yeah um but you could see, you could just see that was going to be Tasha's night. It just, it just, I felt like that night, everything just fell into place. Of all the fights you've had, because you've, you've been up against Jay Niska, you've been up against Holly Bonus, mm -hmm. you've been up against some great girls. Any fights you'd love to have again? Um, so, I think kind of moving forward, there's a couple of fights, kind of Jane, Holly, that I think I'd like to revisit. Yeah. I, don't, I think where I was when I fought them isn't where I am now. So I'd definitely like to revisit them. But I'm just kind of like open to what's coming and you yeah. You just want good opportunities. Yeah, good opportunities. Good promotions yeah. and good fights. Yeah. yeah, and to be honest, as long as it's in my weight category, like obviously I fight over three weight categories and it makes sense. I'm going to fight anyone really. Mm. I, you know, me and Damien, we've never really said no to anyone. You know, so um, because we, you know, whatever whatever's put in front of me, we'll work it out, and you know, together we'll figure it out. And what does um, what does Muay Thai mean to Tasha Hingley? You know what, Muay Thai is just giving me, it's just giving me so much peace and happiness and memories and experiences. It's honestly just opened my life. It's just really give me character and it's just, it's just brought so much to my life. You know, the people that I've met and the places that I've been and the things that I've learned, even to like the small things of like being in the gym and stretching and the conversation and the banter and, you know, they're just, there's just be, it's just given me so much. You get what I mean? And it's really kind of get me, kept me grounded and kind of pushed me in a positive direction in my life. So I... You know, I, I'm so I'm so pleased that I drove past K Star that day. Is that how it happened? Yeah. Wow. I, I was tell, us, tell us about that. So I was I was driving to work, and I just used to drive past it on my way to work, and I used to see because it was um it was just K Star Perry Bar at that time, and I just used to see people on the bags just through the glass, and I just used to I used to I used to think what are they doing, and then on my own just went in there inquired. And then I, um, yeah, I had my first session where VJ lied to me and told me there was loads of girls and there wasn't. <laughs> Cause yeah, there wasn't back then either. Back then like, there was, oh, there was no, no girls really. back, there was no girls back then, but he lied to me, still holding to that. But um, yeah, and then I just kind of like, I just started hitting things and I just loved it. I know that sounds really <laughs> mad. Really and I didn't realize how strong I was mm. until I started hitting things. And it was such, you know, K-Star Perry Bar, back then, it was an amazing atmosphere. You had people like Damien Trainer, Mark Timms, Nathan Epps, Adrian, Gaz. The, the, the fighters back then were just out of this world. So to be able to watch them and be on fighters classes with them and go and watch, you know, be part, like watch their fight camps and yeah. watch them fight, it was just amazing. And when was your first fight then after going into the gym? So I fought three years, so I trained for three years and then, and then I fought. Do you remember your first fight? Yeah. Who was it against? 
I'm not, it was on. Where, a, where was it? It was in Coventry, right. and it was on a, an eight limb show. Oh right. Okay. Yeah. So um, Raf had got me my first bite, and wow. Raf's always been good to me. He's always been good to me. And He's a good guy, Raf. Yeah. I've got a lot of time for him. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I didn't realise. This is how unexperienced I was. I'd gone in and I was really confident. I trained really hard, and uh, I couldn't understand why nothing was working. And she kept tripping me. And then I got back to the corner, it was like, she's South Pole. I was like, oh, it makes sense now. I didn't, I didn't understand. What's, what's South Pole? <laughs> I was just like, because I was like, your nerves, the adrenaline, you get the I mean? I just couldn't like, obviously it'd be my first fight, couldn't read the fight. Um, and then once I knew, that was it. So yeah, went back in there and it all kind of, it got better then. So and how then, many, I remember when I had my first fight, Right, I've not had many fights, but I did have one fight on one show. And I remember playing it out in my head so many times, over and over again, how I thought it was going to be and how it was going to go. And it didn't go a single way like <laughs> I planned. I was terrible, my footwork was awful. And I think when you've had your first fight, I think one of the biggest things I took away from it was the fact that ring IQ <gasps> and footwork are just like, you've got to fight to learn that thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. you can't learn ring IQ no. in the gym. No. Um, and that's the biggest thing I took from that. And, and I'm, like, every time I fight now, I have plan A, plan B. Yeah. And I always kind of, you know, think I'm going to do it this way, think I'm going to do it that way. I get in there and my opponent changes everything. So it never goes the way um, that you think it is. But, like, those things like balance, movement, ring craft. There's a lot no. to be said for balance and movement. People don't, yeah. people don't like Joe Public don't realise how it's easy to anyone can throw a punch yeah yeah anyone can throw a kick yeah to a certain level yeah but footwork yeah and balance yeah is the hardest thing yeah in, when you're in that ring if you've never done it before yeah definitely you know. and it's about kind of you know when you're doing something you know finishing it well not just kicking or just punching but making sure that the whole thing is finished well um, and that's what I um, I've learned and I'm still learning now. So you beat Georgia Heaven at MTGP. You are now MTGP British champion. That must have felt really good. Proud moment. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like uh, uh, 52. It was a, uh, it was a nice, uh, you know, it was, it was a great, it, it was a great opportunity and a great achievement. And like I say, it was just such a good camp, a great weight cut. Had like so many people behind me. I think it'd be good to defend. Yeah. The belt. I think one of the. Do you think one of the things that's missing? I mean, there's so many titles out there now. Yeah. And not a lot of defenses. Yeah. I think one of the things for me, um, you know, with, with so many titles, there's nothing we can do about it. It's kind of saturating it a little bit. But yeah. I think more title defenses would unsaturate the saturation a bit. Do you know yes. what I mean? Yeah. Um, this fly has been with us all day. <laughs> I swear to God, that's a mere. You know. <laughs> I'm telling you now, that is a mere. He's missing out, he He's wants to be involved. Um, so yeah, be good to, to get back on MTGP and defend that title against yeah. somebody. No, definitely. And uh, when I got given the title, that was the expectation. You have to defend it. And again, you know, and it's, that's a new challenge for me because I've never defended a title before. So I welcome that and I'm happy, I'm happy to do it. So Let's talk about your most recent fight. Um, on... K-Star? No, what was no, it? No, it was, was uh, it? Uh, SKS Empire. SKS Empire, that was it. Yeah, um, yeah SKS Empire. Talk about that fight, because you took it on short notice. Yeah, so um, I, I got offered the fight, and I was in, I was in a really good uh, space. I'd been training for a while. I felt good. So I was kind of looking for something, and then Henry had contacted Damien and offered me this fight. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges about this fight was Damien wasn't going to be there because I think he was somewhere else. Yeah, we stole him, I'm sorry. <laughs> we stole him off, yeah. So, and I think that was one of the biggest challenges for that fight, knowing that I was going to be fighting without him because since I got back from Malaysia, that was one of the things I said, I'm not so going to fight. So that's quite interesting, isn't it? Because like we've discussed, you didn't have him in Malaysia yeah. and you really, really felt that. You took a fight on short notice locally, um, didn't have him, were a bit apprehensive about going into that fight and not having him, and you won. Yeah, yeah, and I, I thought that that was going to be one of the biggest challenges, you know, not having him there. So do you think you've now overcome that 
like if Damien's not there, I can still I can still do it, still win. I, I think so. Yeah, I think it was kind of like I think because we have got such a good relationship and I I kind of it was always we we we're gonna do this. So it was always so it was it was hard to kind of just oh this time it's just gonna be me now. But I kind of who was in your corner. Um, so I had Alex Poonam and Danny Edwards. So what are you moaning about? <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, come on. <laughs> I am not moaning. I am not moaning whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, it was, again, it was, you know, I had a really good camp. Um, everything has just gone smoothly. But I think, again, that's come with experience of having so many fights about kind of like having really smooth camps and having really good training and having the right people around you that are going to help you and support you and, and push you in the right direction and pick you up when you're having the hard days. You get to me when you're exhausted and you're tired and you're aching and you're not in the mood. What do you do, what do, you do to deal with those hard days? Because I, I can't imagine you have many because you look like a very motivated person you're always in the gym yeah. whether it's training on pads or muay thai or whether it's i mean you did a marathon the other day or something a half marathon yeah like just randomly do a marathon on a sunday <laughs> you know um is is it more difficult for you i suppose if you didn't do those things yeah yeah i definitely rely on kind of running for me is i i enjoy running i'm probably oh, a bit yeah. I'm probably a better runner than I am Thai boxer. Really? Yeah, because it just comes natural. Like my body just gets into this kind of movement and I can just hold it for ages. Um, so that helps, it brings me a lot of peace, helps me reflect and think of what I need to do in the gym, you know, with my shadow boxing or kind of my sparring, my conditioning. Um, Is help. that your like, it's your thinking time? Yeah, yeah. So it's really kind of like, I run three mornings a week and then I run on a weekend. So I kind of make a lot of time for running. Like I even like, I've got my colleagues at work into running. I get some of them, pull them out. Like we're talking like six o'clock in the morning, you know, before work to run and then obviously start our shift. But um, yeah, it just helps me really focus yeah. and kind of filter out what I need to do. But a lot of it is the people. You, you realize in the sport who's good for you and who's not good for you and the people that you need to kind of gravitate to. And there were so many people that helped me and they don't ask for anything in return. You get what I mean? And I'll, you know, mention something to them and they solve the problem for me or they give me advice or they encourage me. And, you know, um, being at Legacy for like six years, you get a lot of that there. There are individuals at Legacy that just kind of really for me, it's, I've travelled to a lot of gyms all over the UK, um, and the one thing I've noticed about all these gyms is I've been to state of the I've been to Manning's gym in Birmingham, you know, state of the art cryo chambers, lock, stock, the lot, and then I've been to Imam Barlow's gym in a back garden, and these gyms are all so different, yeah, but yet they're all the same, yeah. But one thing I do know is is K Star, for example, is full of good people. Yeah. There's no egos. Everybody's there to help each other. Mm. There are some gyms that you go to that are just you just yeah, you just don't get that vibe, do you? Yeah. Um, so that you know that must that must be great to have that sort of family feel. I mean, I've spoken about it with Sean. Sean's spoken about it. You know, yeah. you and Sean have got a great relationship. Yeah, we've known do. each other for a long time. Now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's 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 marvelous. Muay Thai over the last couple of years has seen some big changes in the UK. Um, it's grow growing. Yeah. It's on a growth tra trajectory, if you like. What do you think has been the biggest sort of contributor to the growth of Muay Thai in the last few years and where you think it's heading in the next few years? So I think social media has obviously, you know, really um, pushed Muay Thai. You know um, things like one championship and being able to access more Muay Thai you know because um, back when I first started really you had to go to the fight if you didn't go to the fight you just didn't know what happened and that was it really and the only way you were going to know about a fight is from the poster in the chip shop window <laughs> yeah 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 so I think social media has really helped um, I think as well you know for females you know back when I started there wasn't that many 
You get what I mean? Hard to match, wouldn't it? it yeah. It would have been really hard to match. Yeah, and you, you know, girls were in gyms on their own. Yeah. And after a bit, it was kind of, you know, for a lot of girls, it just wasn't, it wasn't good and they'd eventually filter out of the sport. Um, lucky for me, I've just managed to, through the, the, the highs and the lows, stay. You get what I mean? Um, and 14 years later, I'm still here. But I think kind of like, now that gyms are being more inclusive and opening their doors and it's not all about fighting anymore, it's about fitness, it's about confidence, it's about self-defense, it's about you know learning and mental health and um, inclusion. I think all these things are now making Muay Thai stand out um, to the public and you know that's why the gyms are filling up. And I think it's been up. westernized a little bit. Yeah. It needed westernizing a bit. Yeah. You know, um, for me that, that people that don't know about Muay Thai, like my wife is a perfect example. Mm. Um, she always wanted to come to a show. She'd never been to one. I took her to one. She absolutely loved it. But the Thai music drove her balmy. Drove her nuts. She was like, I can't deal with that Thai music. It just absolutely drives me insane. And you know what? It's mad because I love it. Yeah, I love uh, it too. Yeah, it's just. But for the fact that you, when you westernise and market Muay Thai like it should be marketed in the UK and in America, and I'm trying to say, I'm trying to kind of describe to Joe Public. Mm. So somebody that doesn't know about Muay Thai, like, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a perfect example, Liam Cunningham. He's a Leapfrog Fight Night signed fighter. Mm. Regardless of whether you love him or you hate him, everybody knows who he is now. Yeah. Because of the marketing that's been done yeah. with him, yeah. like in boxing. And I think Muay Thai hasn't been marketed before like it's being marketed by people now. Yeah, definitely. Which is making it more westernized yeah and and just kind of giving that it's giving Muay Thai more of a platform now yeah exactly but so. it still needs to hold that traditional value yeah definitely you know yeah what's your opinion on one so I think they're doing great things but I am very traditional mm. I'm not very modern so the four ounce gloves aren't for me mm. like you know obviously you have the conversations and stuff but I can't I couldn't do the four ounce gloves but for those that do you know um Iman Barlow, Danny Fall, like fair play to them because that's a big step. Yeah. You get what I mean? And they are like, you know, a lot of people know, people that don't know Muay Thai, they, they, they still might know one championship. So it is opening doors um, and, you know, again, put, giving people a platform. It's, it's entertainment, isn't it? Definitely. It, it's really, I love watching mm. it, but again, for me, mm. it, it, I, I, don't, I wouldn't call it Muay Thai. See, I, I watch a lot of uh, RWS. Yes. So it's more traditional. Yeah. Um, obviously, the scoring's a little bit different, and the fact that they tell um, tell the audience, obviously round by round, is obviously a bit different. But I do I like the fights that they have on there, and it's very entertaining. But it's also very traditional. So, and I, I think like, it, I think a lot of it depends with, what, what career path the, the fighter wants to take. Exactly. So, for example, I've, I know a lot of Muay Thai fighters that stick them in ten ounce gloves will absolutely slice you up. Mm. But then I've send them in the small gloves and they don't fight like they would fight in a Muay Thai fight. Well, it's dangerous, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. And they've lost, you know? Yeah. But I believe if that, was, if that fight was in 10-ounce gloves, mm. I believe they'd have won. Mm. And, I, and, and that's the reason why mm. I don't think I'd ever do it because, yeah. it, you know, it's, it's, you're, you're kind of stepping into a different realm. It's kind of a new, you know, a new experience. And, you know, it's scary. It's something, it's unknown and... You know, you're taking a risk, aren't you, really? Yeah, so. so what's next for Tasha? So um, I'm fighting in December. So uh, fighting on December 14th. So I've got a fight coming up. So I'm currently in a camp. See, December 14th, as soon as you announce the date, I'm thinking to myself, what is that the show we've got? Show we've got? <laughs> in fact, let me look at my calendar. <laughs> Let me just have a look. Okay. Hang on, I'm going to take a wild guess. I might be right, I might be wrong. Let me have a look. No, Unless Micah's no. not uploaded any, no. anything. Oh, hang on, there's two. So, you're not going to be fighting on Bosch Boxing. Fight series? I am. That makes me so happy. Because it means we've got the show. I know, I already know yeah, that you're on the 
brilliant. Show. Right, so yeah, fight yeah. series on December 14th. <laughs> Live on Leapfrog Fight TV. <laughs> Go on, so we're fighting on Fight Series, Jerome's show. Yep, 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 so we're fighting on Jerome's show. Um, we're fighting... Jada Ferrari. Are oh, you? Yeah. yeah. Wow! I know. What a fight. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so we're fighting on December 14th, so I'm currently in camp at the moment. You know, That is a great fight. Yeah, yeah. Jada's yeah. like on the rise. Yeah. She fought on our show. She did, she did. A few weeks ago, great yeah. performance. Yeah. Um, she fought on Combat Kings before that. Great performance on there as well. Yeah. Um, that was a draw, actually. Yeah, she yeah. She got a draw on Combat yeah. Kings for the uh, one of the ISKA titles. Uh, but yeah, great fight. Yeah. Both of you very rangy. Yeah, tall yeah, yeah. girls. Yeah, very similar body yeah. types and stuff. So, um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. I wasn't going to Fight Series, to be honest. Someone else was covering it, but I'm going to Fight Series now. <laughs> Good. Um, so yeah, and then um, obviously get a few fights in next year, and then I'm off to Thailand. Oh, are you? When are you going? So I'm going in April of next year. Yeah. Um, I've been again. I've been really lucky. I don't know how I land these opportunities, but my work is giving me a career break for three months to go to Thailand to train and fight out there. Wow, so yeah. work are like ridiculously supportive of what you do, aren't Honestly. they? Honestly. I mean, even this today, they've given you half a day off to do this. Yeah, yeah, And we yeah. only organised this yesterday. I know. So I need to thank my sergeant and my DI, you know, Foggy, Thanks, Dave. Honestly, they go above and beyond for me. They literally like, if I ask for something, they're like, yeah. And, and as well, like, they promote it throughout the station. They're constantly saying, oh, she's a professional fighter. Oh, she does more toys. She does, <laughs> you know. Wow. So, um, yeah, so I've managed to get three months from work. So we're going to Thailand. We're going to be training. Where are you going? I'm going to go to Lamai. Yeah. Uh, fight out of there and, uh, yeah, just see what happens. And then come back. And I'm hoping, you know, to come back and then, you know, start working on the rankings and start seeing what opportunities I can get and just keep, keep going really it's just well when you go to Thailand before you go let me know because I'll give you a camera and you can go with a camera oh yeah and you can film the whole thing document some of your journey out in Thailand yeah definitely um, with, with us yeah yeah, yeah. 100% yeah. We'll, we'll hook up we'll do some Instagram lives and have a bit of a chat about how after some of the fights you might have had and yeah yeah we'll yeah. do a bit of a thing yeah yeah, yeah. you up for that oh 100% yeah, yeah definitely um, so. so that's next okay where where do we how what you're 36 Six. let's not pussyfoot around it no nope. you've not got many years left in the fight game no i don't what's where are we where are we going to finish where would we like to finish a wbc title uh, a fight on rws where would, where would tasha like to finish her career so um damien is mentioned this to me so many times about kind of like thinking about goals like what do you want to do like how do you want to kind of like end your career um i think kind of like i'd like to like i'll, I'll fight over three weight categories so eventually i think maybe when i get back from thailand you I'm want gonna... a wbc title in all three <laughs> <laughs> <World. laughs> i want to start challenging the number one spots I'd right. like to be number one in the UK yeah. so I've got kind of three categories that I can choose and what, you know. what category do you think is best for you 52 57 50, you fight at 52 57 and uh, 55 55 yeah and the problem is for me I fight well I've got good I've got good skills in all of them yeah obviously when I'm 57 I'm heavier so I can I can bang a lot harder when I'm at 52 I tend to have the height you know, for the clinch. You're big at 52. Yeah. Like, you massive. Mm -hmm. So. It's, it's the, and this is what I like about the whole sport, is the science. Yeah. Do you know, do you know what I mean? Like, the debates. Why we, me, Charlie and Amir were debating who would, who would win certain fights when we're matchmaking with Lewis. Mm -hmm. You know, and what, he thinks that person, I think that person, and it's just that, those debates. But this is another thing where, okay, this is how I want to finish my career. What fight, what weight do I do it at? You yeah, know, um, yeah. 52, let's look at the rankings. Oh, I could do that. There's a science behind every fight. Yeah. And it's so intriguing. Um, but I think at 52, mate, gee whiz. Like, yeah. you're a big girl at 52. Yeah, definitely. So. But do you want to have to cut down to 52 all the time? 
Well, obviously, not for health reasons. I don't like to do it too much. Like, I've, I'm doing it twice this year. I've already done it once. My fight in December is 52. Um, I'm going to have to defend my uh, Muay Thai Grand Prix title. That'll be at 52. Yeah. So, um, I don't mind doing it. But again, I, I obviously have other opportunities, 55, 57. So I kind of just go in between the three, really. Yeah. Um, I'd like to fight on RWS. So that's obviously going to be a conversation that I have when I go to Thailand. Um, and just kind of... I think there's another show in the UK that I'd really love to get you on as well. <laughs> I can't remember what it's called. They've only done a couple of shows. They're a bit amateur to be honest. But yeah, Leap from Fight Night. I want to get you on there. 100%. I'd like, cool. Do you know what? I'd like to get you on a Leap from Fight Night um, in one of your rematches that you want. Okay. Yeah. I think that'd be good. But anyway, that's another conversation. So, to finish Tasha's career, you want a number one spot. Titles aren't really a thing, or what, what would mean more to you? So, for me, I want good fights. I want what I deserve. I don't want, I don't want anything that I don't deserve. Um, and, yeah, I just, I kind of like, for me, I, I want to fight maybe a bit more like abroad, outside of the UK. Um, but I'm going to keep going until my body says enough. Because I know this sounds mad, but this year I haven't felt this good in a long time. You can see though. That's yeah. the funny thing. You can see the different, like if you just go onto YouTube and watch your fights from last year compared to what you've done this year, you can just see you. it's like you're a different Tasha. Yeah, I feel like I kind of found myself again. You know, after my operation and kind of coming through all that, I feel like I've now got back to the fighter I was before my mm. operation. Be better. Yeah. So I'm just going to keep going until my body kind of says enough's enough now. And then see what other doors are open for me and see what other opportunities there are, whether it's kind of, you know, working in gyms or playing tennis. That's me. <laughs> so, Do you know, I like tennis. Yeah. I'm not very good at it. but Well, yeah. for me, mate, I think you were... A massive advocate for the sport. I think you're an incredible person. Oh, thank I think you. you're one to aspire to look up to in life in general. You carry yourself really well. Um, you're honest. You're hardworking. You've got time for everybody. Yeah. Um, for me, that that's uh, somebody that should be looked up to. I think you're a fantastic fighter, and um, and it's been an absolute pleasure to sit with you today and, and get to know you because I've been looking forward to this and I'm looking forward to people seeing who Tasha Hingley is, you oh, know? Thank you. Um, and thanks for sharing some of your stories with me as well. It's, you've been through some difficult times, you've come through them, um, and it, they don't define you, do they? It's, um, been, it's been, you know, it's been an experience so far. I'm sure there's still loads more to come. And I just want to thank everyone, you know, Damien, everyone from Legacy, Alex, you know, um, all the people like my work because if it wasn't for all these people I wouldn't I wouldn't be doing I wouldn't be doing this my mom the dogs the dogs are oh, yeah I mean where would we be without <laughs> without the dogs um, no. before we wrap this up there's a few little quick fire questions I want to ask you so okay. describe yourself in three words nice humble and maybe unaware Unaware. I like that one. Unaware of your potential. I just, you know what? The amount of times people have said you're like a role model and what you've done for the sport, or you know, I've followed. You. I'm just, I'm just so oblivious to everything. I'm just like me. What me? Oh, no one like. You're just a normal girl from yeah. Southern Coldfield, though, right? The, the amount of people that I look up to, and then people say that they look up to me. I just, I'm just like, I just don't understand it. But yeah, so but it's lovely. It's lovely to hear. Yeah, hundred so. percent. Um, how would you want to be remembered? Just probably hard working. Mum and dog. Say that again? That hard working mum of dogs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and just kind of like, um, just what, what I like is the fact that people didn't think that I was going to do this, that I wasn't going to get this far. You know, people thought I was just probably doing it for fitness and then it was going to, you know, I'd probably move on. But 14 years later, I'm still here, so I, I like the fact that I've dedicated my life, I've sacrificed so many things for this sport. That's what I think I want to be remembered for, like 
hard work, dedication, sacrifice, um, and just being a nice person. And on that note, Tasha Hingley, it's been a pleasure to chat to you today. Oh, thank you. Um, you can see Tasha fight on Fight Series 4th of December against Jada Ferrari. What a fight that's going to be. Um, and look forward to uh, a ridiculously busy year for you next year. Yeah. Yeah, really look forward. Keep an eye on you in Thailand. Yeah. 100%. Um, and hopefully we'll get her on a Frog show next year as well. Yeah, definitely. Tasha. Thank you, mate. Alex Pichola for League Frog Fight TV. You can watch this episode on demand on our app or on the website. Um, that's it. What an incredible day. What an incredible coffee. Cheers. Cheers.